This evening in the car hole, we're going to be dealing with front brake rotors and brake pads on a Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra. Uh, these vehicles were in mass production from 83 to like 97, 98. I could be wrong on the years, but it was somewhere in that ballpark. Um, so, you know, probably there's a good chance that your mother still owns one of these, or maybe your girlfriend owns one of these. Well, uh, I'm going to show you, uh, give you guys a little bit of a, a tidbit of information here on brake rotors. Uh, there is two different styles, two different types of brake rotors uh, for this particular vehicle. Now, I went ahead and tore apart the brake rotor on the driver's side of this car. And what we got going on here is a brake rotor that does not fit this particular application. Now, it does belong to the Sierra family. It, does, it is a rotor that would fit um, some Cutlass Sierras. Now, there is two different type of braking systems with this car. Yes, there is. In fact, there is two different types of braking systems. Basically, essentially what it is, is just heavy-duty brakes. Uh, your car may or may not have heavy-duty brakes, and they're going to ask you a question at the auto parts store. Do you have this type of braking system or this kind of braking system? Or they might ask you, what is the thickness, what is the diameter of your rotor? If you don't know, just do what I do. Go ahead and buy two sets of the same of the different rotors that you have. Then, when you come to your garage, then you know. You know what you have. So if you have the wrong one, well then open up the other box. Like this one here, it totally does not line up. It actually, the bolt pattern does not line up with this, uh, this hub at all. So this rotor will not even go on there. So you can't even mix them up at all in that aspect. But if you're not sure, just buy both rotors. And then uh, when you come home to your garage, then you know. Um, so, like I say, very simple. Uh, so what we're going to do now is, uh, seeing as how we do have our proper rotors, uh, we are going to take the other ones back to our auto parts store and get a refund on them. And that's all you have to do as well. If you don't know, buy both of them. And then you do know for next time. And just take them back accordingly. Or keep them and sell them on eBay or Kijiji or something like that for double the price. I know a lot of people actually do stuff like that. A lot of you guys are crooks. Anyway, so we're going to get started here. A couple safety aspects. Jack. Jack stands under the vehicle. Okay. Uh, remove the tire. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start uh, dismantling this caliper. There is, in fact, Torx bits on these particular calipers that hold these brake calipers in place uh, to the steering knuckle. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to... Um, want to get yourself a, believe it's a T35 Torx bit. Let me just double check here so I'm not misinforming anybody. Uh, no, sorry, it's a T50. It's a T50 Torx bit required for that. So uh, keep that in mind when you're going to get your tools. You're going to need a T50 Torx bit. Um, and we're going to go ahead and get started in removing this. This rotor is obviously shot. Well, it could be machined, but I don't believe in uh, spinning rotors or turning rotors. I just uh, replace them. The, for the price of uh, having them turned, you're better off just to buy new rotors. So we're going to get started here. Okay, so now I'll take your screwdriver, just uh, pry off the uh, brake caliper, just like so. Go ahead and remove your inboard and outboard pad. You'll have to remove the, uh, the inboard pad first before you can get the, out one, the outboard pad out of there. So just uh, like I say, manhandle this stuff, it doesn't matter now, you're doing a brake job, so it doesn't matter. And there's your, yeah, see these obviously are wore out. Uh, well, there's quite a bit of material there, but for a car that needs to pass safety, this won't pass. There's not enough material there, it looks grungy, so uh, a mechanic that actually cares about keeping his license probably won't uh, let that pass. Now, take a C-clamp now. We're going to uh, compress the, the uh, caliper piston in. Like I say, don't go crazy with it. Stay away from the, uh, the gasket as much as... It, and you only have to go in about maybe half an inch. So that's good there, just like that. And uh, now let's talk the rotors real quick here. I'm going to go ahead and slide this off if uh, it'll let me. Okay, there's that one. Now this is my replacement rotor, okay? This one will actually fit, but the other one actually won't go anywhere near 
the it won't line up anywhere at all. See, we can tell that this one will not fit this particular application. So, like I said, like I said before, go and uh, buy yourself both rotors if you're not sure. They will ask you the diameter of the current rotor that is on your vehicle, and uh, if you don't have the time to take your tire off and do things twice, well, just go ahead and. Uh, uh, buy both rotors and then take them back to the store. No big deal. Save yourself the headache. So we'll go ahead and unbox this new rotor and uh, very simply just slide them on over top. Uh, if you have some uh, high temperature grease, don't forget to just put a little gob on the caliper ears. Okay. Um, now the brake pads. Okay, so same story. You got your your uh, inboard pad, your outboard pad and your inboard pad, okay, uh, very straightforward. Um, so your inboard pad of course is going to go like this, the curved uh, side down, alright, so just slide down like that, alright. Technically there should be some uh, uh, lubricant that goes on the back of these, uh, unfortunately it didn't include in any and I don't have any here unfortunately, uh, you gotta love how that happens. So, uh, these brakes might squeal, I don't know. Hopefully I can get away with it. Maybe it won't, maybe it will, who knows. Okay, now, we're going to slide our caliper back over. Uh, make sure that your your studs, for your, cal your caliper studs, aren't going to be bashing against the caliper ears here, okay? So if you do have to uh, start using a hammer and all of a sudden it isn't moving, stop pounding whatever you do because you're going to end up screwing up your threads. So just... Be careful on that. If, it, if the caliper isn't moving or refuses to move, after you give it just light taps, there could be something jamming it, and more than likely it is the caliper bolts. So uh, be forewarned on that. Yeah, see right here, my uh, and the bushing too, you got to kind of push that out so that it'll clear. grief too, you know, that's just the way uh, the laws of mechanics are, unfortunately. Okay, so a bit of a delay here. I uh, I have this bushing here, if you can see it. Uh, it was stuck out, so I had to uh, tap it in with the, with the, uh, a hammer because it didn't seem to want to push in with my finger, so I got it to uh, move in uh, just about a fraction of an inch just so I can uh, continue on with this task here. But of course, you know, something like that, of course, will flow up the production. There we go. Just like so. Now, go ahead and install the caliper bolts. Tighten them down, torque them. And uh, we're going to be about ready here. Ten minute break job.